A very warm greetings and salutations, fellow internet users. It is I, EW. Today, I am here to present a deep dive into the Angry Birds Adventure atop Mount Faber campaign in Singapore. Seeing as it has been 10 years since this event, I figured it only be appropriate that we take a look back and reminisce as well as educate people on this relatively unknown event. Without further delay, here is the history of the Angry Birds Adventure atop Mount Faber. Singapore a sunny island settled within Southeast Asia, known to be a place of economic activity and a global financial centre. From 2011 to 2012, Singapore was host to many large-scale Angry Birds events that would heavily alter the appearance of pre-established buildings, such as the well-known Changi Airport. However, it is important to ponder, why Singapore? Why not any other location in Southeast Asia? This question can be answered by one simple word. Geography. Dating back to colonial rule in Singapore, Singapore was a key asset to Great Britain, as Singapore is located in between Malaysia and Indonesia, as well as being the southernmost tip of the Malay archipelago. Now, how was this beneficial to the British? Take a look at this map. Let's say ships want to travel from India or China to somewhere in the Malay archipelago. Instead of having to travel long distances to get to their desired location, they can simply travel through the Strait of Malacca between Malaysia and Indonesia. And, lo and behold, guess what country is settled nearby the Strait of Malacca? That's right, Singapore. This allowed Singapore to be a sort of crossroads for the British Empire's trading networks, emphasised during the industrialization of Europe in 1870, where resources such as tin and rubber, which were most abundant in the Malay Peninsula, were in high demand. This raised the number of ships travelling from Europe to the Malay Peninsula, solidifying Singapore's status as a global trading hub, as many ships would travel through Singapore to break bunk, fill up small cargo at a low cost, or even refuel. Therefore, Singapore's good geography made it easily accessible to many parts of the world. With this ease of accessibility, more people from across the world would have access to Singapore. Thus, this answers the question of why Singapore was chosen, as with greater accessibility, more people would be able to attend the campaign, boosting numbers further. Fast forward the clock. Singapore would go through the Second World War, independence from Britain in 1959, merger with Malaysia in 1963, racial riots in 1964, which led to the separation from Malaysia in 1965, and finally, Singapore's independence as the Republic of Singapore. Being a country that is easily accessible to many parts of the world, tourism is a pivotal market for Singapore's income, with 4% of her total GDP coming from the tourism sector alone. Thus, it is no wonder that Singapore has invested heavily into its tourist attractions, be it from its advanced mice facilities, such as the SunTech Singapore Convention and Exhibition Centre, to its theme parks, such as the Universal Studios Singapore. One such example is the Singapore Cable Car, which was built in 1974 and served as a way to enjoy the sights of Singapore while transporting you to a neighbouring island. The Mount Faber Line connects mainland Singapore to Sentosa Island, which houses Singapore's main tourist attractions, while the Sentosa Line connects people across Sentosa Island. Naturally, this would entice tourists to take the cable car to enhance their visit, enjoying the scenic beauty of Singapore while getting to their location. Therefore, to further entice domestic and international tourists alike, in 2012, Mount Faber Leisure partnered with Rovio Entertainment to bring to the island of Singapore the Angry Birds Adventure atop Mount Faber event. This event saw Mount Faber Peak being decorated to the brim with Angry Birds related decorations and activities. Activities ranged from a shooting range using plush birds and pigs, to iPads with Angry Birds games on them, with their screens being mirrored to larger screens. You could also partake in various handicrafts, as well as games on Mount Faber Peak. The ticket counters were even decorated, with the lobby of the event having a photo taking area, as well as a cable car with Red, one of the blues, Chuck, Matilda, and Hal seated in or out of the car, a prime area for photo taking. Pricing of the ticket is as follows, $29 and $18 for an adult and kids round trip respectively. Family packages, family entailing two adults and one kid, priced at $55, with additional adult and kid being $18 and $15 respectively. 
senior citizens aged 60 and above at 12 per pax. Please note that this package is only available to Singaporeans. You could also sign up for the limited edition Angry Birds Jewel card, where you could get a year of unlimited cable car rides, priority boarding, and exclusive privileges for dining and shopping at the Jewel Box at Sentosa. Signing up would grant you complimentary Angry Birds merchandise, with the cost being $49 for an individual and $139 for a family of four. On to the main attraction. The iconic cable cars were decorated with Angry Birds themed decals, as well as a jumbo-sized Commonwealth plush in the car. In addition, you would receive an Angry Birds themed mask, as well as an Angry Birds themed tumbler. Initially, the masks offered were Red, Chuck, and King Pig. Later down in the promotion, the blues and ruby were added to widen the range of characters. Okay, you guys are going to have to trust me on this one. I distinctly remember there being a bomb mask. However, I cannot find my bomb mask or any pictures of the bomb mask online. Maybe it exists, maybe it doesn't. I'm leaning towards that it does not exist. But if any new information surfaces, I will update it in the pinned comment. Alright, back to the video. And, of course, there would be a gift shop where you could purchase souvenirs of the event as well as Commonwealth plushes. This would be the basis of how the event would be run for the whole seven months. Now, let's skip a few months ahead into October, where we have one of two major events, the Halloween event. That's right. To celebrate Halloween, ticket holders on the 27th of October 2012 will be granted entry into Sentosa Island's Port of Lost Wonder. The Port of Lost Wonder is another tourist attraction on Sentosa Island, aimed at families with kids, with its flagship attraction being a massive pirate ship water playground. With regards to the Angry Birds event, ticket holders will be granted an additional piece of paper to their ticket, being a pass to the Angry Birds themed Halloween playground and activities. From 5.30 to 8pm, enjoy various activities centred around the Angle Birds and Halloween, earn a free goodie bag with limited edition Angry Birds merch, and witness the grand finale of a bunch of children and parents beating up a giant king pick pinata. Personally, while I have not attended this part of the event, looking at images, it seems to have been a wonderful time, filled with fun activities that would have appealed to me as a younger child. Hello, hello, it is editing EEW here. So upon looking at a few copyright laws that the blog post that I'm sourcing images from, I can't actually use the images. So instead of using the images here, I'm going to be leaving the blog link in the description. If you are curious to see actual images from the Port of Lost Wonder event, please go check their blog post out as they basically have the entire event documented now. With the arrival of December, we are reaching the end of this wonderful campaign. And what a better way to say farewell than an event to celebrate the holiday spirit. Unlike the Halloween event, there was a noticeable alteration to the cars in the lobby, with the photo-taking area decorated quite nicely with a snowman pig and a center red. Furthermore, the cable car JPEG in the background, while retaining the same birds, would now have added snow, as well as Hal and Red wearing Santa hats. Now you may be wondering, what alterations could be made to the main attraction, the cars? Could there be new decals in the interior or exterior of the car? What about plushes with Christmas hats? Or maybe even makeshift snow in an equatorial cloud and go but red with snowflake design. Take it or leave it. And so, on the 31st of December 2012, the Angry Birds adventure atop Mount Faber would come to an end with Rovio Entertainment and Mount Faber Leisure Group parting ways. Rovio Entertainment would go on to create more video games in the Angry Birds franchise while the cable car remained in operation, occasionally collaborating with other franchises to mimic the success of the Angry Birds event. All in all, the campaign is fondly remembered amongst those who participated or attended it, and is one of the most iconic Angry Birds related events in the sunny island of Singapore. Thank you for your time today, and have a good day. One last thing. This video will not be possible without the help of online sources such as blog posts or news sites. So all the sites scrolling right now are sources I pulled images or information from. This video was generally such a joy to make because I get to look back on all of the fun memories I had when I was 6 years old. And I figured that finally doing a Angry Birds history video would be a good challenge for me as I've been in this community for around 4 years now. 
without really touching the history of the Angry Birds events in Singapore. So I do hope I have done Mount Faber justice in this video.